Thank you all for taking time out of your day to join us today. My name is Tyson Choptain, and I am the Managing Director of Broadview Networks. And today we're going to talk about business automation and co-pilot introduction. And I'm sure many people are probably very excited to hear more interesting information about co-pilot. But we are going to cover a little bit of some of the not necessarily artificial intelligence, but certainly the automation things that we have been doing with the Microsoft 365 stack of products for quite a while here at Bravi Networks. I'm joined today by Jordan B. Sine. He's our solutions analyst. He's one of the experts that we have in the area of PowerPoint, uh, SharePoint, Power BI, sorry, uh, business automation, and bringing the Microsoft 365 applications together to empower our customers to do more with those, those applications. Very happy to be joined by a lot of attendees from Manitoba Tech Week. Uh, so it's an important event that takes place in Manitoba every year. And thank you all for taking time to attend. And also, as we are now part of a larger organization, MSP Corp, and the associated other business units across the country, want to welcome both those business units and the attendees from those business units. Again, thank you very much for taking time wherever you might be across the country. It might be later in the day for you. It might be early in the day, but I really appreciate everyone joining us today. If you want to chat or ask any questions, uh, please do so in English or French. If possible, it's probably going to be easier to hold the majority of the questions for later on. But if there's something really important that you think it makes sense to bring up during the conversation, please let us know. Today we want to prompt your imagination. We want to talk about the art of the possible. We want to show you some examples of some of the things that we've done with the Microsoft 365 tools that most of your organizations probably already have and may or may not be using either in the ways we're going to talk about or fully to the capabilities of what exists within the tool set. Microsoft 365 slash Office 365 has a wide a range of features and functions that you can take advantage of. So we're going to talk through some case studies of what we've done from an automation standpoint to help customers get more out of their tools and get more time back in their day. And then we're going to go to Copilot, which is more of another example of how to get more time back in your day. And, and really how we look at this is the automation is more organizational level change, how you're going to change business processes and you're going to add automation to those. And then the co-pilot is more personal automation and, and artificial intelligence to assist with that and how an individual can help get their own work done more efficiently, faster with the leveraging of uh, co-pilot and, and the AI tools that have been out there in the market for quite a while, but brought now into the Microsoft 365 scope into an easier way to work with. So driving productivity through these micro engagements. So one of the things I think it's very important everyone understands is we're leveraging a large set of the Microsoft 365 tools that most organizations already have available to them. But these are not massive, complex application development uh, undertakings. They're reasonably low cost efforts. They're usually one to three days. They're easy to adopt. You see an immediate return on investment for the time put in for us to help you develop this automation to be able to realize the benefit of it. We consider the more configuration versus development. We're not writing custom code here. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're just linking together information that you already have and exposing it to your users in a more functional way to improve their business processes. And it's very expandable. We can start with a small piece of work and add on to it over time as your organization is ready to progress. We're leveraging, as I've mentioned, a number of the large parts of the stack of Microsoft 365 and probably parts of the stack that you don't think about as much. Everyone's used to Word, Excel, Office, PowerPoint, Outlook, email. You might be using SharePoint and OneDrive to some degree. But now we're going to talk about linking more of the back end of those together and building automation between them with the data that you already have. 
So the first example we're going to talk about is, is Bothwell Cheese, and we're going to talk about a couple of different things that we've done for them. We're going to talk about a partner of ours, LCM Security, and how we help them save a large amount of time in how they deliver their client reporting. We're going to talk about Hydro International and how we help them uh, build a very simple app using Power Apps to be able to do some inventory uh, tracking of some devices and equipment and calibration tracking of that. And then we're going to talk about how AI, even prior to the world of co-pilot and sort of outside the chat GPT world of AI that most of us have been thinking about for the last year or so, how um, Microsoft has a number of AI features built into the back end of Microsoft 365 that can help with, say, invoice processing for an organization. All the solutions here that we talked about are, are micro engagements. They were in the two to five thousand dollar range and they were quick and easy for the organization to adopt. So Bothwell Cheese is a pretty well-known name here in uh, in Manitoba, certainly in Winnipeg. Uh, they're a very successful uh, cheese story, and uh, they have a sister company out in BC, and they make really good cheese. And uh, we were able to help them with tracking safety incidents. So prior to this discussion with us, for safety incidents, they had paper forms they were filling out. And as we all know, paper forms have a multitude of problems. A, they can get wet, they can get dirty, you've got to interpret different people's handwriting or printing. Um, people can put just whatever they want into what were just lines on a form, so open text fields essentially. And so there was no uh, consolidation of data that was very easy. It was a manual process where someone was taking the data, putting it into Microsoft Excel, generating an Excel report on a monthly basis to be reviewed for safety incidents, which is something you probably want to have the ability to review more often than once a month. So we helped the customer by taking the data set that they wanted, building a SharePoint list from it, an electronic form, and then creating Power BI dashboards, providing real-time reporting and notifications. And Jordan, I'm going to have you jump in here and take us through the actual description of what you did for them. Sure, sounds good. Uh, yeah, so so in this example, it, it, it'll it also show how SharePoint List is really a great way to use SharePoint beyond just what people might be using it right now as just a file, uh, as a file repository. So uh, here in this example, and, and we'll see the, we'll see the, see the form in a second. Once the form is filled out, uh, um, and the actual record ends up in a, in a SharePoint list that becomes your um, electronic database of each um, individual um, incident where you see that on the left, how now you have it in a, in a list form like that. And with the um, having it in a online form like this, uh, it's also forcing standardized uh, dropdowns so that people can't just write whatever they want. And that'll also help uh, when it comes to the next step, which is having uh, additional uh, additional reporting, having those standardized fields, being able to fill this out on your phone, on a tablet, and then not having it just on a um, piece of paper. Uh, and then some, some additional things can be made inside of SharePoint here. You can create a, a view, different views of that list where you can be viewing this in a calendar view. So now, for example, if you're having monthly uh, monthly safety meetings, you would just look at this calendar and you could go look at all the safety incidents that you had in a specific month. It's all there in one place. You're not going through a pile of a pile of paper or a pile of Excel uh, documents to try to find that. And then now using a tool like uh, Power BI, uh, real-time reports can actually uh, pull from those SharePoint lists and then just display these reports for you. These reports can then just be shared to specific managers, et cetera, so that they're not waiting at the end of the month to see trends on things. They can be looking at this daily if they want, and then uh, no one's wasting time every month producing uh, manual reports neither. And then in this final example, this is um, how we're using Power, um, Power Automate to generate notifications. So when a new safety incident occurs, specific notifications can be sent to key to key staff, uh, either uh, the department manager, uh, the safety officer, et cetera, can be notified right away 
of a new safety incident. So uh, in this example here, it's kind of showing how, how all of these different tools are all working uh, together. Uh, and in this example, we're showing safety, uh, safety issues. You can kind of imagine this same process for this would work well for if you want to track quality issues instead or customer issues or the list kind of goes on how you could use this type of um, setup for different things that might be more um, applicable to what you're looking to accomplish. The next example for Bothwell Cheese was they were very happy with that work that we did for the safety incidents. The next example was they had already moved their Excel spreadsheets that define um, how they actually manage their SKUs for their product and then their procedure documents, their responsibilities and their QA documents uh, to SharePoint. So um, in their production plant, they have the cutting room. All the cheese is made in these giant blocks. And depending on whether it's shredded, whether it's going in the little deli packs, the big deli packs, the really big packs, it all has to get cut down and packaged accordingly for what product skew that is that they're selling to whatever customer they're packaging for that day. And so they started off with tablets that they had uh, on on uh, straps around their neck holding the tablet and people would scroll through the SharePoint site and find the right document for this and then scroll through another SharePoint site to find the document for that. And, and it worked, but it certainly wasn't as efficient as it could have been. So what was done here is we gave them an easy way to view and reference all the information they needed on the production floor in one simple way to view and access all the documents. So uh, Jordan, please explain uh, here what you built a little bit. Please. Sure, so you'll start to kind of see a, a, a common theme here where uh, what we did is replaced uh, using Excel spreadsheets with uh, using a SharePoint list, which is a lot more robust and less prone to having um, issues if someone breaks a link between sheets. So uh, in the background, their list of all the SKUs and all the relevant information is in a SharePoint list. And then a kind of uh, navigation page here was was made where uh, clicking on a specific on a specific SKU. And if you uh, go to the next slide now, this now takes you to a page dedicated to that SKU where uh, you would see the form of that uh, particular SKU. You would see all the um, information about that. And then on the right hand side, it would show you all of the documents only relevant to that specific SKU. Uh, I think there's a few more uh, screenshots as well where it shows. So here's all your standard operating procedures. Um, et cetera, it's all in one place. So as, as as Tyson mentioned, these documents were in SharePoint, but people were spending time finding the relevant document for that sp specific SKU. This is really just um, assisting them and having everything in one kind of organized place. Uh, here's an example of, of uh, having the line, their line, diagram here and uh, in, a, in a future phase they're also uh, looking into having um, uh, linkable uh, kind of uh, little um, kind of hyperlinks on this where you could click you could on. actually yeah where you could actually click on a specific uh, specific area and and then it would actually open up the relevant document for that for that piece of machinery perfect the next sample is LCM Security. LCM Security is a, a partner we use for security services, and they have a, a review process they do with their clients on a regular basis, usually a quarterly basis. And it's uh, a s multiple sets of data that comes from multiple different interfaces to data sets that they have. And in the past, they had one of their security engineers uh, collecting all these reports from all these different locations and then manually compiling that into a PowerPoint database. So we did a number of components to this. We automated, well, 
helped with the automation of the report generation process. Their systems had an ability to drop the report into a specific repository, but now we set it up so that all of those systems dropped it into one file location, and then the end user just drags and drops it into another location. As soon as it's dragged and dropped into that second location, the data is scanned and the reports are created. And then the, within a few minutes, uh, there's a little bit of report generation cleanup that has to be done. The uh, report exists in, in PowerPoint. And before, again, this was a technician spending hours putting it together. Anything you want to add on that, Jordan? Uh, no, I, I, I guess maybe just kind of a, a general st statement would be there's there's times where specific softwares, uh, whether it's financial software, etc., some of them have limited their own limited reporting, and that's where uh, at times Power BI can directly connect to these things. But whenever it can, generally speaking, most of these tools have the ability to um, export data to CSV files, Excel files, and that's what we're doing here. And then that's where Power BI can start mining all of those uh, CSV files, et cetera, and then producing real-time reports uh, for you. Uh, and then kind of just uh, wanted to highlight some of the um, integrated AI features that are inside of Power BI that will 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 also give you some additional insights versus using something like Excel is uh, for for example if you see in in that graph here where one of the months seems a lot higher than 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 the other instead of uh, spending time digging down trying to figure out why that month is higher than the others you can just right click say explain explain the increase and now it'll um, generate in plain kind of English, what's causing that, what's causing that increase. So here it, was, here it says reliable billers um, accounted for the majority of the increase and then drywall accounted for the majority of the increase among the items. So it, it really gives you a quick kind of high level overview as to what's causing either an increase or a decrease in a specific month. And then it also gives you the ability to ask it questions in kind of once again just plain like English what's our top five items and now it's showing you based on based on the price what were the top five what were the top five items so it really kind of um, opens up additional um, options there versus doing things in Excel. Yeah, depending on the complexity of the data sets that you have coming out of, as Jordan mentioned, another business application or Excel spreadsheets that people are manually putting data into, that data can be combined into a very simple form of a data lake and then um, the necessary components can be linked together, exposing that data to Power BI, allowing for that data to be generated in a format that the people that don't have a strong knowledge of the, the raw data can then utilize, view, and ask the questions Jordan was talking about of that data. So it can really improve an organization's reporting capabilities across, even within one business application, but especially across multiple business applications. Next example is Manitoba Hydro International, well-known uh, local Manitoba uh, organization. Uh, they have lab equipment that's used for uh, doing testing and certification of some of the power generation testing that they do. It's still an important part of what Manitoba Hydro International does is Manitoba Hydro makes power. Manitoba Hydro International does a whole bunch of testing and evaluation and lab simulations of, of power. And that's how Manitoba Hydro develops a lot of their new knowledge capabilities and they have the equipment that they need for this and they needed mobility for it. So uh, a power app, phone-based power app was built that tracks the equipment detail, the calibration history, can send notifications about expiring items. Uh, and it was again, all built with power apps. And now with some of the new AI tools that are available in power apps, they can even simplify the building of the original app or you know, suggest improvements to the app and then implement those improvements. Go ahead, Jordan. Sure. Yeah. So, so in this example, it, this was really just a very, a very simple app where they needed on their phone to be able to search a specific, uh, specific piece of equipment, 
uh, click on that piece of equipment and then see the additional details about that equipment, where it is, uh, when when is the warranty expiring, when is the calibration expiring, and then uh, once again, they when we, when we look here at there's uh, the uh, calibration history manuals. These things were already all inside of SharePoint, but they were they were they were scattered all over the place. So now they could just click on the manuals and then it would just open up the library that has those uh, manuals for that specific piece of equipment. So this tool kind of brings all those different items together and then using um, using flow um, slash power automate, uh, there was also notifications so that when a piece of equipment was about to expire, uh, they would get notified 30 days ahead uh to make sure it gets recalibrated uh, in time so that it stays so that it stays valid so another example is how we we've been using ai even prior to copilot and you know the the microsoft ai stack that we've been hearing about for the last few months uh, and even prior really to chat gpt and the more common ai that most people have been working with as individuals this is an example of how there has been some AI built into the Power Platform and into the Microsoft 365 stack for quite a long time. So in this example, we've got a SharePoint site that has a mailbox. So we have the ability to send emails to that mailbox, whether the customers give that email address out or, you know, we have a rule that when that email comes in, it gets moved to another mailbox. Either way, uh, as those emails come in, the uh, Power Platform side of things is taking those emails and interpreting the data in them and then generating different functions based on the data that's in those. And then Jordan, I'll let you go ahead and explain this because you know this one much better than I do. Yes, yeah. Uh, so in this example, uh, PDFs are being sent and uh, inside of those, uh, what what what's happening is now uh, a workflow is is actually grabbing the PDF and then mining the data from that uh, PDF and then uh, creating uh, the metadata fields inside of this SharePoint library. So now you you have all of these fields there where you can now start filtering, sorting, grouping. You could be uh, once again using a tool like Power BI reporting on this as, as well. So now um, instead of someone manually looking at an inbox, grabbing a PDF, uh, writing in that information into an Excel spreadsheet, et cetera. That whole thing can be just um, automated for them where it's gonna be pulling relevant data from those uh, PDFs and then doing whatever you want with that, with that information. And on the, on the next slide, uh, there, I, I just, uh, there, there's a few other examples of things you can do with the um, AI features of of Power Platform, one is getting into the um, image recognition side of things. Where if you want uh, a workflow to spot your old logo in photos or documents, or you want to retrieve um, images from security cameras, let's say you have a security camera taking photos every 30 minutes, uh, you might want to have a workflow trigger if it realizes that maybe a fire um, extinguisher is missing from a specific area. So if that fire extinguisher isn't on the wall there, uh, that's kind of important to know and you want to get you want to get notified if it realizes it's missing. Different things like that. Uh, if you want to have it start looking for product, product defects. Uh, and then there's the other side of things, which is getting into the sentiment, uh, sentiment analysis where you can have it start uh, scanning different um, emails or scanning social media or uh, employee or student feedback surveys, et cetera, where you can start to detect maybe frustrated or negative, uh, negative emails, negative comments, uh, negative survey, uh, so that instead of mining through hundreds of surveys, if maybe you want to get to the more, uh, more, more pertinent ones first, a tool like that could could flag the ones you should follow up on right away. Yeah, and that's a perfect segue into talking about Copilot because some of that sentiment analysis we're already seeing being used in the Copilot side of things as well. So 
the age of co-pilots has arrived. So Microsoft has released a number of their AI agents, their co-pilots uh, for a number of their platforms. And just to set the framework of what we're talking about today, within the world of Microsoft co-pilot, there are many different co-pilots for many different areas. Uh, we see it in the browser and search side, uh, which was originally the, the Bing chat for enterprise, now co-pilot for for Bing, Copilot for Edge. We have seen Copilot in Windows 11, uh, which will allow for Copilot searching inside of Windows 11. There's Copilot for GitHub, which helps on the developer side. And there are a number of AI and Copilot tools on the, the Power side, Power Automate, Power Platform, Copilot Studio, we'll talk about a little bit a little later on. There's uh, Dynamics 365 and the Dynamics um, CRM suite of products and Copilot integrations for those. And then there's the data and AI side where Microsoft has open AI servers running inside of Azure and Azure AI services available for customers to use. Today, we're gonna to focus on the modern work side of things, which is Copilot for Microsoft 365, Microsoft 365 Copilot. And that's really about how do we take the power of Copilot and bring it into the Microsoft 365 apps that we all know, love and use today. And so what is Copilot for Microsoft 365? It really simply is the large language model that some of us have been working with now for over a year with the chat GPT side of the world. So that idea of generative text-based AI leveraging the artificial intelligence platform to take questions that humans ask search the data that's available out on the web and bring it back to you in a human readable interface. That's what ChatGPT has been doing for us for quite a while now, but now we're taking that to the next level. We're not just using ChatGPT 3.5, we're actually using 4.5 Turbo inside of Microsoft 365. So higher performance and um, less wait time for your uh, request to be processed, but now we're taking your Microsoft 365 data uh, via Microsoft Graph, and we're bringing that data into what the pri previously would have been chat GPT can now search across and give you answers from. Integrating that into the Microsoft 365 app, so embedding it right into the apps that you use, and grounding it against the internet so we can bring internet data in as well. So you can make a co-pilot request and it can search just the web, depending on what interface you're choosing to use, but it can also search the web and your Microsoft 365 data, SharePoint, OneDrive, email, Word documents, PowerPoint documents, Excel documents, everything that you have inside of your Microsoft 365 is now available to be searched by Copilot for Microsoft 365. And there's, there's a bit of a security conversation that has to happen there, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So just to give a quick introduction of the ways you can access Copilot and kind of what we've been seeing with, with ChatGPT, we have the web browser interface. So copilot.microsoft.com, you sign in with your uh, Microsoft 365 account, and then you ask your Copilot questions and you get to decide whether it's searching work inside your Microsoft 365 or just searching web. Now, when you're searching work, it will do both, but when you're searching web, it'll act just like ChatGPT did to search just the internet, but with that more powerful ver version of ChatGPT. You also have this in Microsoft Edge as an actual uh, button right in Edge that you can choose and you can choose Copilot. You can decide how balanced or how precise or creative you want it to be. And again, here, when you authenticate to Microsoft Edge and you have the appropriate licensing for Copilot for Microsoft 365, you get the ability to search work again or search web. So you can do it from any browser via copilot.microsoft.com. You can do it from right inside Microsoft Edge. 
And now with the embedding into the other Microsoft applications, you can do it from inside Teams. So there's Copilot for Microsoft 365 built right into Teams. So you have the ability to do those questions right there in the applications you're already in. You don't have to go to a web browser, open chat GPT, log in, and then ask your generative AI questions. You can do it right here inside of Teams. And again, you can ask questions that will search both across the web and across your work data. So let's talk about how potentially people are going to be using Copilot. And we want to talk about personas. And, and then we'll, we'll show some different examples of some of these personas using it more at a Microsoft overall example level. Then we'll get into some specific examples of some of the things we've already been doing and seeing customers doing at, at Broadview. So marketing, it's a very simple way to help jumpstart the creative process and generate ideas. Really what we're gonna see in some of these areas, marketing being one of probably the strong ones, we'll probably see it flow pretty soon into customer service. It's not gonna be about when your customer adopts AI, it's gonna be, sorry, if, sorry, you're, you're, you adopt AI into your marketing and your sales, it's gonna be about when, and the sooner you do it, the, ahead of the curve you'll be or the less left behind you'll be than the others out there that are already starting to use it have potentially already been using chat gpt and now want to leverage that additional power of copilot sales obviously there's a number of different ways uh, email summarization is fantastic uh, we'll talk a little bit about teams meeting summaries customer service microsoft recently announced copilot for service which by nature today integrates with their dynamics 365 product but will be interfacing with other systems reasonably soon. Uh, finance, again, can integrate with systems or just help you assess the data that you already have. And then um, project tracking, project updates, and then HR to help store and access prioritize information that they need real time about, uh, about everything within the HR process. So let's look at Copilot in Word as a simple example. Take a paragraph that describes a bunch of data and ask Copilot to quickly turn it into a table for you. Boom, it's done. Now you've got a table. Now you can take the exact same data and look at it in a very different format. And now you can decide to keep it. You can decide to adjust it. And then if that table's involved enough, you can leverage Excel to help you analyze the data in that table. Again, simple way to use existing information and data that you have and right inside of the application, ask Copilot to help you do more with the data that you already have without having to spend more time to do it. Sales, a perfect example. There's a meeting that you want to attend, but you can't because you have a conflict. Click on that meeting and ask Copilot to do a follow-up for you. It will give you a summary of the meeting and it'll give any action items there where you were specifically named, even though you weren't even in the meeting. So the meeting can take place with five or six other people, but because you're an attendee, Copilot recognizes your name. So as people say your name in the transcript, Copilot picks that up and then it's able to summarize your name being in the transcript and and give you the information that's relevant to you out of that meeting. Uh, email summary is fantastic. You have an email that has 15 or 16 different back and forths between multiple people. You don't need to read all of those 15 emails. You click the co-pilot summary and you get a nice five or six, 10 bullet point summarization of that email. Huge time saver. Co-pilot in Teams. I just gotta turn off my laser pointer here for a minute. Go back. And here we see an example of what did I miss in a meeting so far? So if the transcription for a meeting, the co-pilot transcription is turned on at the beginning of the meeting, which we would highly recommend once you get co-pilot, uh, someone can join the meeting late and just ask it to say, what did I miss in the meeting so far? And it'll give them a summary of the meeting. Not the entire transcript of every single thing every single person said, who, you know, took their dog for a walk yesterday, who went to see, you know, a movie yesterday. Well, that's interesting information. It's probably not as critical, but here's the important things that people talked about, about what mattered about the purpose of the meeting. Uh, it is bilingual, so it's available in multiple different languages. And there is some language translation capabilities built into some of the team's functions as well. Sorry, that question was just asked real time. 
A copilot in Excel, an easy way to summarize data in Excel and see that data. If you're an Excel power user, you're probably not going to rely on copilot to do this for you on a regular basis because you know how to click, click, make a power pivot and, and have that pivot table and see that data. But for the people that aren't necessarily strong Excel users that get Excel spreadsheets from others, this is a very easy way for them to use that data and get more out of that data without having to become Excel experts to the same level as everyone else else in the organization. And then in OneNote, not a place that most people would necessarily think of for Copilot, but you've got a bunch of notes you've made. You may have made notes that are or aren't all that critical, or you may have documents someone else has given you in OneNote. Give it, ask it to give you a summary. Ask it to help you put that into a marketable format or use it in a marketing statement. That's what Copilot can do for you. It can take that generative AI, chat GPT, Dolly capability out of the open AI footprint, and it can bring it into your ability to use it real time with your data inside the applications. So we'll talk about a use case we did. So Scott Gillingham, our mayor, did a state of the city uh, speech a couple of weeks ago. Now, that's a, a very nice speech to attend, and it's great to be able to spend that entire hour to enjoy it real time. But what we did as an example is we took that video and we played it during a Teams meeting. So therefore, because the audio came in, Teams was able to create a transcription. And then we asked Copilot, take that transcription and summarize that transcription. And then from that summarized transcript, we asked Copilot to make a PowerPoint out of that. And it went and built a PowerPoint based on what it saw as the important pieces coming out of that. It created the agenda based on the highlighted items that it found based on how they were expressed. It created the introduction statement and it created all of these PowerPoints and went and found all the images and added all the images into it. Um, interestingly, you know, AI is very good. AI has a lot of power, but it's not perfect. It makes the odd mistake here and there that's interesting based on how it interprets data. So one of the projects that was talked about was uh, the Red River Floodway, which if you live in Winnipeg, you know a lot about the Red River Floodway. It's very important to protecting Winnipeg from floods every year. And when it was originally put in place and championed by Premier Duff Roblin, it got named Duff's Ditch. But AI doesn't recognize Duff Stitch, it called it Duff Stitch. So while it can generate a lot of very good information, save you a lot of time, you do need to go back and double check and make sure everything's 100% correct. But the amount of time it saved in taking a video, turning it into a transcription, summarizing that transcription, turning it into a PowerPoint in a 15, 20 minute process compared to watching the whole video, manually taking notes, taking those notes, opening PowerPoint, creating a PowerPoint, summarizing what goes into each of those points, going and finding those images. Copilot did it faster than any human could ever do it. And then take those same notes and help me create a marketing campaign based on this. So based on what we do, help me take the focuses out of here and build a marketing campaign based on what came out of that presentation. So perfect example of how you can use it. But wait, now we can ask SharePoint, Copilot for SharePoint, which is in preview right now and may or may not be part of Copilot for Microsoft 365, and say create a SharePoint site based on that marketing campaign so we have a central place to access that PowerPoint and then record any data that we need to or do any follow-up activities. All done with clicks of buttons, leveraging Copilot and the power of what Copilot for Microsoft 365 can do. Now, how does this actually work? What is the magic that's going on behind here? Well, it's all based on OpenAI's large language models. That's the core functionality that is generating the capability for a human being to ask an instruction and get back a response or ask it to do something and it be able to process that ask and make something happen. What's now been done is Copilot sits in between the large language models, in between the Microsoft 365 applications that have Copilot embedded in them, or the Copilot on the websites we talked about earlier, and leverages Microsoft Graph, which is that 
semantic index of the data that you have inside of your Microsoft 365. So as you store data in SharePoint, as you put emails into Exchange Online, in the back end, Microsoft Graph is always building all these links between all of this data. It's been doing that from day one. If you've been a, a SharePoint user with SharePoint Online for quite a long time, and you go into the Microsoft 365 web interface, uh, you go to Outlook Web, access or any of the other tools, you'll see that when you go to OneDrive, uh, you'll have a whole bunch of documents there that you may not have even created because Microsoft Graph sees links to meetings that you're in or other people that are a part of it, and it knows that that might be important to you, so it shows that information to you. This is taking that same Microsoft Graph power leveraging the large language models. So you make a request via one of the Microsoft 365 apps, Copilot goes out and figures out, okay, do I just send this to the LLM or do I need to reference graph first? It does the pre-processing and grounding with the internet as a part of it. It encapsulates that all up, sends it off to the large language model inside, running inside of Azure. This is all staying in Microsoft's world, all staying in your Microsoft 365, and then sends the responses back to you inside of the application that you use. It's secure. It's contained. You're not taking your corporate data outside of the Microsoft um, Copilot and Microsoft 365 world and outside the Microsoft environment for where this information is being maintained. Whereas right now, if you have people taking your data and using chat GPT, that's kind of out in the wild. There's no control. There's no security mechanisms there. Now, one important thing that I'll talk about right now, because it may come up as a question later, Copilot won't give your users access to any data they don't have access to. It won't give me access to someone else's mail data inside of Microsoft 365. It won't give me access to files that I don't really already have access to in SharePoint. But if you didn't set up your SharePoint sites with the proper security controls from the beginning, you may have files, you may have data sitting in SharePoint that users have access to that you might not realize those users have access to. And when Copilot in Microsoft 365, the user goes and asks, I want to see all the files that have payroll. If you have some people that have access to the HR repository that aren't supposed to, they might see some of that payroll data. Now, funny enough, if you ask Copilot to give you payroll data, it's actually smart. It'll come back and say, uh, I'm not going to process that because that could be sensitive information. You can use the governance features in Microsoft 365 to extend that security even further based on data types, based on meta tags in SharePoint, and based on governance rules you create. So, ChatGPT technology built into the Microsoft 365 apps, leveraging the Microsoft 365 data that you have and being able to use that with your users inside of those Microsoft 365. That's a simple summary of what Microsoft 365 Copilot is and what's happening in the background there. One of the things that we're very excited about is Copilot Studio. And this is the ability to take Copilot beyond just Microsoft 365. You can already connect Copilot to other online systems such as Salesforce, so it can analyze and pull data out of Salesforce. You can also build your own controls and management functions into how people can use Copilot, and you can take your own data sets that are currently outside of Microsoft 365 and give Copilot access to those data sets to make it a part of what it can share as well. So it doesn't technically bring it into the Microsoft graph, but it brings it into this pre-processing part where the grounding can happen outside of just the Microsoft data and the internet, linking it to other data sources. So you can connect to a variety of different third-party systems today. You can customize your own business processes. You can add controls in for compliance, HR. You can build specific co-pilot functions that you need or want beyond Microsoft 365. So Copilot Studio is in general availability, but Copilot Studio that can reference your Microsoft 365 data is in public preview. 
And again, just to kind of put some mindset around the different co-pilot words and terms you either have heard or will be hearing or will continue to hear over, you know, the next weeks and months because lots of excitement about co-pilot out there. Here's kind of the simple table to understand the differences. Copilot is free. Right now, anybody can go and use the free Copilot inside of the web. That's the Bing chat for enterprise. That's there. It's got that same foundational capabilities of leveraging the large language models against the web data that it has available to it. Copilot Pro is something an individual can go out and purchase. It gives you a little bit of priority, so it gives you chat GPT uh, 4. Um, but it also uh, gives you the ability to use Copilot in Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote, but not against your Microsoft 365 data. And that's where Copilot for Microsoft 365 starts to significantly separate itself from the other Copilot functions. That's where you gain the ability to add it into Teams as well, but you get the Microsoft Graph grounding. So not only are we searching the web, we're also searching your Microsoft 365 data. We add in that enterprise-grade data protection, and with Copilot Studio, we add in that extensibility and control of how people can use Copilot and extending to other systems. And as you can see here, these are the prices in Canadian dollars. When you look at Copilot Pro at $27, giving you ChatGPT4, um, but not giving the ability to add your own data to the $40 for Copilot for Microsoft 365, it's not a very large price increase for the benefit you get. And compared to the ChatGPT paid for products, it's actually very reasonable when you think about the fact that you're leveraging your Microsoft 365 data as well. Now, as it stands right now, Copilot for Microsoft 365 is available at approximately $40 per user per month. It's actually sold as an annual agreement right now, uh, but we already have customers that are purchasing and using it today. So it can be added to any Microsoft 365 um, or Office 365 meeting some certain requirements. You have to be on business standard or better in the um, business the business side of Microsoft 365. Uh, in the Microsoft 365, you have to be E3, E5, or Office 365, E3, E5. So if you have users that are business basic or frontline worker users, there are some different things that might have to be done to be able to leverage Copilot for Microsoft 365 for them. And that's a conversation we need to have um, with your account managers and, and whoever provides your licensing for you. Our starting advice for how you start getting the most functionality out of Copilot, recapping Teams meetings. This is fantastic. I do a lot of Teams meetings, spend a lot of time talking to people. A transcript of a Teams meeting will be, you know, multiple arm lengths long. Um, out of that, there's, you know, five or 10 nuggets of important information. At the end of the meeting, you ask Copilot to give a recap. It gives a nice summary. It'll even give sentiment. If it thinks there was negative comments in it, it'll tell you. If it thinks it was positive, it'll tell you. So it's kind of neat how that sentiment component that Jordan was talking about earlier gets brought into it. Summarize and write word files creating PowerPoints, searching for content, summarizing and composing emails. Those are all some of the simple, easy ways to start getting advantages out of it. Uh, there's the Microsoft 365 chat Copilot Teams plugin, which makes the interaction with Copilot more like the chat GPT style uh, interaction. Very cool add on to Teams that you get. Uh, there is a prompt library in the Copilot lab that's highly recommended for how do you ask the right questions? How do you ask the right prompts to get the right results back? And what's really cool is as Copilot summarizes information for you as you ask, it'll give you back suggestions as to how you can make the re results that were returned better or dig deeper into them. Very uh, interactive. Don't start with Excel. It's not where you're going to get your biggest bang for the buck. Again, if they're, if you have non-Excel power users that, you know, you're going to send them uh, documents that they might not have the strong Excel skills for, they might get some benefit out of it, but that's not going to be your, your best uh, experience. And 
permissions. I talked about this earlier. It doesn't provide any different permissions, but it does expose all data people have access to potentially depending on the search. So you want to make sure that when you are going to look at rolling it out to your organization, you have the proper security in place in your SharePoint, in your OneDrive, in your structure. And we can help with that. So we have put together a co-pilot readiness engagement. In this readiness engagement, we will help you with the necessary firewall rules to, pardon me, to optimize co-pilot, uh, SharePoint and Teams file storage permission check. Teams stores all of its data in SharePoint, but you don't necessarily interface with it usually in that traditional SharePoint view. So you may not have done that permissions review of those Teams file repositories the same way you would a traditional SharePoint document library. So that can be very important. Um, update your Microsoft 365 tenant controls. So there are some tenant level co-pilot controls and there's more coming, standardized PowerPoint templates, things like that, so that if people are creating PowerPoints from data that you have, it's going into your template and having the look and feel and control that you want. We recommend deploying to a couple of, of pilot users, some, some power users that are going to really understand how it's going to benefit your organization, and then providing the necessary guidance to those users as a part of this engagement. So really walking you through the co-pilot journey from the very beginning, getting all the pieces in place, getting everything ready. So as you're evaluating how you're going to use it in your organization, you're going to get the most out of your time that you're putting into that um, to understand how it can be used. Another way that we're introducing Copilot to our customers is in our, our cloud optimization coaching program. So we have a program available today. It's delivered on a quarterly basis that helps people understand what is available to them in their Microsoft 365. What are you using out of what's available to you in Microsoft 365? Because there's a lot in Microsoft 365 and help people identify, prioritize, execute and measure the value they're getting out of that Microsoft 365 spend. We go through a framework based approach for how we review, understand and discuss with the customer how they're leveraging the different functions of uh, Microsoft 365 across their profile, their network, their office applications, their file storage and their security and backup. And then we get into detailed questions and we actually give a score and a scorecard as to how effectively you're using Microsoft 365. In this process, we often demonstrate a lot of new features of Microsoft 365. And obviously one of the features we're focusing on right now is Copilot. So a couple of different ways to get engaged. If you wanna learn more about automation and AI, and how you stay ahead of the others that are going to be using it. Um, reach out to your account manager, get email us at solutions at bravionetworks.ca. We can make our solution analysts available um, to have a follow up discussion and discuss how it applies to your organization and help you achieve more with the time that you currently have.